Welcome to the Mike Palouse Outdoors here on URLradio.net. The more hits we play, the more hits we get. Uh, we're going to do a little bit something different here today. We're coming to you live from Devil's Lake, North Dakota, and I'm with a guy that spent a lot of hours out on this body of water over the course of the last couple decades, and that's Jason Feldner, uh, who recently uh, had a chance to fish in the NWT out here. Uh, we're currently pre-fishing for the AIM uh, tournament out here this week, and then uh, certainly going to head up to uh, uh, Lake Sakakawea uh, next week for the uh, AIM State Championship. But uh, we're going to ask Jason a few questions about... Uh, Lake, uh, Devil's Lake in particular and, and his feel and, and kind of what is taking place out here. It's been kind of one of those years. Uh, a lot of things have been different, but at the same time, it's been good too. So we're going to talk to Jason here a little bit and see what his feel is on uh, Devil's Lake, North Dakota. Jason. Yeah, how's it going, Mike? Nice yeah. talking with you again. Um, yeah, this year has been, been a little bit different. You know, the water is dropping just a little bit. We have a huge abundance of of little baby perch and baby white bass in the system and it's really affecting these fish um seems like we're catching fish a lot deeper this year the bigger ones anyways you know of course our guide fish and stuff we're still fishing the humps and things like that but you know looking at a tournament like this it's it's either really shallow or really deep seems to be the key right now with all these all these bait fish out here so so what do you think with this falling water i mean is it for the long-term uh, health of devil's lake is it is it good is it bad is it okay is there a good enough population here where it won't affect it? I mean, what's going to take place out here in the next couple of years? You know, I'm not a biologist, but I mean, when you get fresh water coming in this lake, it, it definitely strives, you know. Um, not all fish relate to current to spawn. You know, we've got tons of rocks in the lake, these main lake fish and stuff like that. I think they just got their normal spawning grounds. Um, I think what dictates our hatches the most is the spring weather. I mean, if, we, if they spawn and we get a big cold front and the water temperature drops, you have a bad hatch. You know, like this spring, we had a really good hatch because it went from winter, basically, to summer. Fish spawned, the water temperature kept rising, so those those fish hatched right away, and that's why our numbers are good. I was talking to a biologist the other day who was out doing some netting on the west end of the lake to see how the perch were, were and he said this is one of the best hatches he's seen on the west end for the perch. So, well, so I mean, obviously for you guys, I mean, you guys do both summer and winter, so it's a huge thing for you guys to, to hear reports like that because I know it's been kind of isolated as far as, the perch bite, and I'm no expert by any means. I, I follow you guys around, obviously, when I come up to help you out. But, you know, as far as the, 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 a lot of them nice-sized perch in the winter, you've been having to chase a lot further than you, you normally did. And and uh, hearing that there's a there's a hatch over, you know, throughout the lake, that's that's probably good news on, on your behalf. Oh, definitely. We're going to have some really good years coming up here, too, because last year there was a lot of 6- to 9-inch perch and a bunch of 10s and 11s. And the, the larger, larger fish were weren't as common. But these fish are all going to catch up now. Well, with the amount of food that, that we're seeing, I mean, there's Correct. tons and tons of food. And, I, and do you feel that's some of the issue of why, you know, it's been kind of a goofy bite some days? Some days you absolutely wreck them on this lake, but then next, some days it's a little bit tougher. Yeah, that's that's a fact. I mean, even when, we, when we're guiding, we, we look at our live wells, there's a bunch of baby little fry puked up in the live well, you know. So it's some days they don't eat a lot and they're tougher to tougher to go and some days it's just on fire yeah that's it's interesting so now another question for you not to get away from devil's lake because that's our main focus here uh you spend some time now on lake sakakawea you know you and i have been doing some guide stuff over there you know what's your what's your take on that body of water right now it's unbelievable <laughs> i mean the fishery is absolutely unbelievable it's, it's been a little hit and miss lately of course they got the same issue over there with all the schmelt and everything and then as water temperatures got hotter everything went deeper they're a little bit harder to target yeah. But it's it's phenomenal fishery, and and if you're going to compare the two, I mean, it, it, not just in North Dakota. I mean, we are we know how spoiled we are in North Dakota as far as our fisheries are concerned. But if you're going to rank these systems, Devil's Lake, Lake Sakakawea, we can even throw Lake Hawaii into the mix. Uh, you know, what, where do you place these in, in around the country? I I honestly think Sakakawea without. You take the Great Lakes out of the picture, I think it's the number one fishery in the country right now. Yeah, I guess I couldn't disagree with you, you know, on I'd that say one. Devils I'd, would probably be in the top five. I'd say at least top three, to yep. be honest with you. But, yeah, no, I agree with you. So uh, predictions for – let's let's throw predictions out for this week's aim. Uh, we're up here for a qualifier. Uh, I haven't fished them all. I'm just coming up to fish this one because my schedule allowed me to. But uh, certainly our main focus, your guys especially, is uh, team of the year – uh, getting into the national championship, but a prediction for this uh, this aim on Devil's Lake, and then also the one up on Lake Sakakawe in a couple weeks. I think I think this Devil's Lake one tomorrow with the wind picking up, 
I think you're going to see three bags over 30 pounds. Yeah, I, get, I believe it. And three then, bags over 30. I think you'd be in the top top seven. I think you're going to have to have 25 pounds or more. Yeah, it's a pretty good bite. I, you look at that across the country, and that's yeah. that's pretty outstanding. And then now uh, switching gears, headed up to Lake Sakakawea for the AIM State Championship. Any predictions for that one? If it's one of the days when the fish really turn on, it's going to be epic. Yeah. It's going to be over the 30 pounds. If it's going to be a, a tough day of fishing, which I imagine one out of the two will be, I think, you know, 25 pounds, you're going to be looking pretty good. So 20-pound bag each day, you might be able to sneak in that top five? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and then on this one, probably the same thing. 20, yeah, but we only got a one-day tournament here. So. 22, 23 pounds maybe? Sneak top into five, the top 10? Top 10, yeah, top 10. I think so. Okay. Well, we heard it from somebody that obviously spends a lot of time up here on, on Devil's Lake and Lake Sakakawea. If you get a chance, you can go to a couple of our different websites. Uh, Jason and I are kind of teaming up to uh, do a lot of guiding out, out here, obviously, on Devil's Lake. And then certainly uh, Lake Sakakawea, you can go to mjsguides.com. And then you can also go to the Mike Palooza Outdoors.com. And then you can also go to purchise.com. So there's all kinds of different uh, avenues if you're looking at getting out here to book a trip with uh, one of us or the gr a group or whatever we can accommodate larger groups and and all kinds of things so pretty pretty cool times up here in north dakota we've got it got it dialed in pretty good right now i, I even believe that uh, lake uh, lake oahe missouri river i mean obviously with a state record coming out of there this spring uh, i'm thinking next year we're going to see another state record come out of there uh, early on so uh, if you're looking to book some of those early trips too don't be afraid to get a hold of us and we can get you going there and, and as we speak jason we got one on that rod right there so you might as well reel that one in since i've reeled them all in but it's been uh we're just out trying to trying to probe the probe the waters here a little bit today we're we're uh, covering ground a lot of stuff that we have not fished uh yet this year so we're just looking to see if we can locate something new and fresh we kind of know what our game plan is already for the tournament tomorrow um, you know, we've got a couple areas that we're going to go concentrate on and see what can what we can bring in I, again for me you know it was one of those things where i just decided to jump in it because we had paid our entry fees to be able to fish the state championship i just so happen to have a, a gap in my guide schedule here that allow me to come out here and and uh give a give it a half a day pre-fish and then fish the tournament unfortunately i'm not real fired up about the uh, wind predictions that they're throwing out at us tomorrow because it's going to be a little bit squirrely i think at times especially with gusts up around 30 miles an hour that this lake uh it, it bears its name uh it turns into a devil there's no question about it so I'm gonna keep it rolling here. We gotta see what uh, what kind of fish Jason's got here. <laughs> I don't lose it. His, his nickname is Big Fish Felder, but I don't know. It's on the surface, but I I think if we were in guiding, would, would this be a would this be a guide fish? Oh, yeah, I think if, it's an 18, 19 inch mark. If we were guiding, would be that big? Oh, maybe not that big. Yeah, guide fish. Yep. One, one for the one for the table if we were if we needed to eat releasing grease yeah naked and afraid we wouldn't go hungry that's for sure so i uh, just wanted to thank you guys for listening uh, make sure you like and share these videos uh, let's gain some traction on this so we can keep this rolling uh fishing reports that's another thing i want to touch on uh, both on mjsguides.com and mike peluso outdoors.com we're gonna have quite a few fishing reports trying to Trying to stay current on that. I don't think there's enough of that going on uh, out here in North Dakota. So we're going to try to take the reins and the leadership role in that and, and keep people fresh and, and what's going on. Uh, certainly, if you're looking to come out with yourself in a boat, it makes your life a lot easier. And it's uh, a way to save some time and hassle. There's no doubt about it. So until next time, thanks for listening.